What's up everybody? Welcome back to 9 to 5 Gamers and today we are doing another Top 10 Tuesday and uh, I'm really excited. I love my Top 10 Tuesdays and you guys voted and today we're doing Top 10 Comfort Games. But before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All of those things help out the channel a lot and don't forget to check out the Patreon if you want to check out some of the things that we offer there. Um, but apart from that, uh, if you live in the Central Florida area and you're looking for uh, a time to just come together and play some board games, I partnered together with uh, a group called Board Game Caravan and uh, they're going to be basically, they rent out a venue and they bring their collection and uh, we play games and so if you're in the Central Florida area and you want to uh, play some games um, it's gonna be this Saturday and so if you're interested in checking it out I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out if you're watching this later on in the future um, that event has probably passed by now so uh, but link will be in the description you guys can check it out and you can always check out what he's doing he does uh, trips all over the place to try to uh, uh, play games with people. He teaches people how to play the games. I'm going to be there volunteering to uh, teach games, um, and it's going to be really fun. So if you're in the Central Florida area, please come on down. But without further ado, today's list, top 10 comfort games. Now, I had to Google what comfort meant because I'm like, what does it mean for comfort games? And uh, it kind of reminds me, I've seen some people name them cozy games, so we could also call it cozy games. It's the opposite of chaos, right? So it's, it's, not, it's not kites, right? This game gives me anxiety and it just causes all kind of stress and comfort games are the opposite of that. They're games that are, that are chill, that are comforting, that are cozy, that are zen, right? Like, like games that are not going to give me anxiety like kites does, because kites gives me a ton of anxiety. It's also not Blood on the Clock Tower. This game gives me anxiety, but it also gives a lot of other people anxiety. Cause like, who do I trust? Ah, and it's people are yelling and screaming and shouting. This could cause you a great amount of stress if you are not careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those off to the side. So we're gonna talk about our top 10 comfort games, um, my top 10 comfort games, and what which games I can just play and, and just feel like, wow, this is super chill. I don't have to like focus on uh, I don't have to be worried about anything or stressed out. You took my resources. You did that. They're not very mean games. Um, and so I want to go through the list. So let me do two honorable mentions. Number one is Cascadia. Now, the reason Cascadia is getting an honorable mention and it's not number one on my list is because I don't like Cascadia. Um, I just don't enjoy playing it. Um, is it a comforting game? Absolutely. Creature Comforts. That's a great comforting game, never played it, so I can't add that to my list either. Um, but another honorable mention that is a new to my collection and I, I just started getting into it and I haven't really played it enough to know, um, but this game is incredible and it's called Distilled. I think this is an expensive game. You could probably find it for like 80 bucks, but I found it for 60. This game is worth every single penny that you pay for it. This is a super chill game. I loved playing it. It's just kind of like, has a little element of like push your luck, which can sometimes be kind of stressful because you're like, what am I going to get? But the, that mechanic is really cool. So this, in Distilled, you're trying to, uh, you get this brewery and then this distillery and you're trying to um, distill different spirits and different, and if you don't know what spirits are, they're just alcoholic drinks. Um, and even if you don't drink, alcohol like this is a great game <laughs> like to be honest like mechanically this game is so cool has a lot of cool um in the instructions little parts that tell you about how um distilleries have are making uh these different liquors and things like that and in this game though you have this big distillery and in your distillery you you add um in the washback you add in elements you know you need yeast you need water and you need some kind of a sugar and you put those elements in there into your distillery and then afterwards you take all the cards that you added and you shuffle them up and you take off the top card which is the head the bottom card which is the tail put those back in your pantry to save for later distilling and then the rest of the stack you fan it out and you say oh cool let me see what um kind of spirit that i uh matched up with and it's so so good and it's not a game that's like super stressful but like you play competitively against people and you can you know you know fight for points and fight for those brand labels and man this game is amazing i am i am shocked at how much i like this but i'll do a full review on that but this is definitely guaranteed gonna climb the ranks of of ch you know like a nice comfort game that's just chill and easy to play um distilled is super fun got to get yourself a copy but that's just an honorable mention like i said i haven't played it enough to know yet so let's get into my top 10 my number 10 comfort game cantaloupe 
right? And specifically, number one, I haven't played the rest of them, but man, what a chill, comforting game. Like, all you do is read, and they have these little code cards, and then you're, it's not frantic or crazy, you're just basically reading and matching up cards with different icons in the pictures, um, and um, it's just a fun little point and click adventure, right? Like, have you ever done point and click adventures, like in the computers, where it's like, you're in a room, and it's like, hmm, I'm gonna look at the clock, and then you click on the clock, and then you can interact with it. That's how this game is, but it's, a, it's an actual, like, board game, and it's super, super fun, very inexpensive, and honestly, it's a good game that you can just play by yourself, you can play with somebody else, and you guys are just using items to interact with the different objects, and Funny stuff will happen when you interact dumb objects together. You're like, what were you expecting to happen from this? You know, you put a banana and a cell phone together. Now your cell phone doesn't work. You know, it's like stupid things that make you laugh. And then sometimes those things end up working and getting you through the story. This is such a really fun, comforting game. Very chill, very easy to play. Cantaloupe, you guys should check that one out. Really like that game. That's my number 10. Number nine, I almost missed it, but this is actually new to my collection, Sprawlopolis. Sprawlopolis is such a cool game. I'll put it over here. Um, Sprawlopolis is such a cool game. It's a button shy game that comes inside this little tiny wallet. And in this little wallet, there's uh, I think like 18 cards. And what you're doing is you're building a city out. And um, with these 18 cards, you can play it solo or you can play it with uh, an another player. And while you're playing together, um, you'll get three cards in your hand. And then after you build a, um, like a little city card and put it in there, um, you will take your two remaining cards and pass them to the next player. It's kind of like almost like a drafting thing. And then it goes to the next player. The next player takes them with their one card and now they have three to choose from. Then you draw a card. Um, and it's really, really cool, man. Like it, you want to try to like get all the roads to be contiguous so that there's no roads that are kind of like on their own. Every single road that's just chilling and being in the side will give you negative points. You want to make sure. And there's also like three objectives that are always different every single game. And so um, those three objectives will determine where you, which kinds of, um, you know, uh, whether it's like the park or the industrial spaces will score you the most points. It's just a really cool game, man. Like I honestly wasn't expecting much out of it since it's just a little wallet game, but so many people have said that they liked it, that I had to try it and I loved it. And it's so chill. Like it's so comforting to play. Like you don't feel stressed out at any point. You're just kind of like, hey, let me see if I can beat my score. Up, oh, I didn't. Hey, you know what? Run it back. Let's do it again. That's why I really like Sprawlopolis. That will be my number nine. My number eight, this is a game you can play with a lot of people, it's up to six, and it's Point Salad, man. What a chill, comforting, relaxing game. I guess there's not like a whole bunch of take that unless you're just playing with a bunch of really mean people who are just like, what are you collecting, tomatoes? I don't need this tomato, but I'm taking it so you don't get it. But even then, it's like once they take it, it's like new cards come out and then you're like, okay, well, there's a tomato there, so I'll just take that one. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a super chill game. I really, really enjoy playing Point Salad, especially when you get the full player count of six people and you just take those objective cards. The whole point of the game is just that you can either take an objective card that's gonna show you how you score points with the little vegetables or you could take two vegetable cards and um, then you just put them in, your, in front of you and it's a little set collection game and man, it's super fun, super chill. Everybody I've played this with loves it, and it is one of the most comforting games ever. So chill, you don't even have to worry about anything, right? My number seven is a game called Three Sisters. So um, this is made uh, by the same makers who created um, Fleet the Dice Game, as well as um, Motor City, I think is the new one. Is it Motor City Games? Motor City Games is the ones who created it, 25th Century Games. Um, which they just came out with the new uh, version of Raw, which is really, really fun. But Three Sisters is a cool uh, uh, roll and write. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was tough because when I was looking for this comfort game things, I didn't even think I was going to have 10. I was kind of scared. I was like, why did I even put this as a voting option? Because I don't even think I have 10 comforting games. But I realized that a lot of roll and writes are very comforting. So it was very hard for me to not just make this a roll and write list because roll and writes are probably the most comforting chill games you could play. You just set up a pad by yourself and just roll dice and, and, and check off things. This game is just like that. You roll dice and then you take those dice and you use them in different areas of your garden to plant seeds and those seeds will uh, grow. And as you have a, a rain shower, it, flower, it, it showers and waters all of your garden at the same time so that every single one of those things that you planted 
will grow and so you're checking off boxes and so all of the bubbles are stacked up like uh, corn stalks and then you stack them up and then you got the bean stalks that grow on the side and then you got the the pumpkins that grow on the outside and that's how you keep uh your your because that's what the three sisters is it's uh i think it's squash it's not pumpkin it, it looks like a pumpkin but it's it says squash squash corn and uh and i think beans really fun game though man and it is super chill it's not i feel like fleet is a little more hectic but but three sisters is not three sisters is very chill it's got a cool little run not rondelle but a little action selection board on it as well adds a little cool little mechanic to it but three sisters really comforting i love three sisters so it's my number seven now on to my number six and this is actually a newer game that i just got played and that is agricola got to play it it is by no means a bad game i don't enjoy it as much as caverna but it's a little different than caverna because of the card play and this game to me felt a little more chill than caverna was caverna felt a little more hectic a little more you know like you took my spot you took my building oh my gosh i needed those wood i needed that in this game especially if you play it by yourself solo super chill experience man and i enjoyed i, I any type of game that is farming Farming games are just like the most chill games you can play, and Agricola is just another one of those, um, and uh, I really enjoy playing it solo. I think if you play with people, it might be a little more hectic, but this is definitely on my list of comforting games that made me feel comforted. comforted. Uh, my number five game, this is a really cool game. You can play with up to five people, and it, it scales very well. And not only that, this game is super, super cute, man, and it's affordable at 30 bucks, and it's made by the great Phil Walker Harding. Um, and so um, you can get this at Target. Super great production value, and, and the, the, the pieces that it comes with are super high uh, quality. This is one of the greatest bangs for your buck for 30 bucks. Like for $30, you're getting a lot of game. But this is like a picture like a Seven Wonders, um, but instead of building little, you know, things inside of your city, you're building up six plants, watering them until they're fully grown. And uh, you just, it, it's a drafting game. So you take plants and cards that you need, um, water, sun, you take the basic elements and ingredients that you need for a healthy plant, soil, right? Like. You take all of that stuff, and then as you gain resources, you draft and pass the cards over. They take a card from your hand, pass, and then you just keep doing that until you run out of cards. So there's tools and uh, end game bo uh, bonus scoring points and stuff like that. Super good game, man. Planted is just definitely one of my favorite drafting games, and it's super chill, man. Like, um, it's one of those games where it's like not like Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders, you're like attacking each other. In this game, it's just kind of like, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to water my flowers and mind my business. And I like that. It's cool. Sometimes you need that in your life and no chaos. So planted, really cool comforting game. That is my number five. Moving on, my number four is a game called Trekking Through History. If you never played Trekking Through History, you've got to at least get a gameplay of it in. Find somebody who has it. Maybe there's a board game cafe. You definitely got to try this game because this is such a fun game. And it's super chill. Like I don't feel at any point... Um, that I was like things were hectic or frantic like I was like it was chaotic and I'm just like oh my gosh you took my thing and no it was just kind of like all right cool uh, I'm gonna take this card I'm like ah mm, well you know I could do is just go with that one or you know what I could do I could take one of these and it's cool man like it's such an easy game to play and basically it's just uh, you're trying to travel back in time and you go to different periods of time and there's different years and each year is um each card has a different year on it and you're trying to stack those in um ascending order so it's like i'm going from really far back to more modern times and as you stack them in order um there's kind of that i guess you call it that ratchet system where it's like once you go forward dude there's no going back right and so um if i if i place you know 17 bc um, I can't play 16 or I can't place 18 BC because I already passed that year up by placing the 17. So um, it's really, really cool, man. And I, I just really enjoy this game. And it's just such a comforting game for me. Um, collecting all the little pieces and putting them, putting them on your itinerary, man. I like this game. This game comforts me and makes me feel all warm inside. And I like this game. I love playing Trekking Through History. It's such a chill game. Doesn't feel super competitive, but super, super fun. Um, loved it. Uh, another game. Oh, this is my number three, and uh, that is a game I love playing solo, but I don't mind playing with people. But nobody ever wants to play it with me because they always look at it and go, "Ill math." 
Um, but Turing Machine is such an amazing game, man. I told you this is my favorite, like, currently my favorite logic deduction game. Um, I liked it better than Planet X because it's just numbers and it's so simple to play and so fun and just you just set it up on the table and you just play a couple of rounds of this and just it feels like such a fun little puzzle. Like if you find Sudoku like um, like chill and relaxing, if you find Wordle chill and relaxing, this is a game for you, man. It's such a fun game. It makes me feel comforted and I just I love numbers. Numbers numbers comfort me. So if this doesn't work for you, then obviously you can just exclude this from my list but it does not feel frantic or hectic especially when you play with people because everybody's just kind of doing their own thing um there is kind of like that maybe a little bit of anxiety because somebody's getting it faster than you are but at the same time it's just kind of like i just have fun doing the puzzle even if i don't if somebody solves it before me i'm just like oh darn you know what i mean but turing machine that is my number three my number two uh comforting game is a game called flamecraft oh my gosh man talk about chill like, Flamecraft is such a chill game um, because in this game, nothing really bad happens to you in this game. Like, the worst that something that can, that can happen is, like, somebody takes your spot and you could still go there. You just have to give them a good, which might mess up your strategy. Or they might take your, uh, like, your little um, contract and say, oh, well, I'm going to fulfill that one. But you can kind of already know people are going to do that. You know what I mean? Like if you're watching around the table and people are collecting the same resources as you and they're getting more of them, then you can kind of just go, you know what, maybe I should pivot and switch to one of these other contracts and stuff like that. And it's a fun game, man. I think chill and comforting games are games that you can play, lose, and still say, yo, I had a good time though. You know, this is really fun. Flamecraft is that game. And there's something comforting about all the little pieces. Everything is just so beautiful in this game. The artwork, it's such a chill fun cozy game that comforts me when i play it i enjoy love playing this like if it's a chill night and i'm like yo i don't feel like you know people getting crazy and loud and stuff like that it's just you know let's just play flamecraft you know um because it's just i take my turn i gather my resources your turn and that's it it's really really simple um gets a little more um complex once more shops start coming out and you got to fire up all the dragons that are in the shop and there's like a ton of things uh, that you can gain um, but yeah it's a really cool game man you're just pushing through and trying to fulfill contracts really really fun and I, the artwork you, man you guys did such a good job thank you cardboard alchemy for producing this thank you sandra tang she was the artist and thank you manny vega the designer of the game amazing game super comforting that is my number two and my number one game that brings me the most comfort that I can just play and and it's just so chill and zen is Viticulture. Viticulture, especially the Essential Edition with the Tuscany expansion and um man with the with the Automa, this is just like the mo one of the most chill games I've ever played. I don't know if maybe people disagree with that. But when I play this with my wife, man, there was just no negative feelings or you messed me up or you took my stuff. You would have never won if you didn't do this or it was just kind of like a, you know, even then because they have ways of mitigating. So like in worker placement, there can be a bit of um, uh, interaction between people where a player interaction where it's kind of like you took the spot that I was going to take. Now I can't even do my action. That's what the grande worker is for because if you play with the grande worker it's like you have like all these little workers but then you got one that's bigger than the others that can go to any spot regardless if somebody's there or not so you know it's like if you play with that one well it's like hey nobody's ever gonna mess me up by taking my spot right um and so just keeping and hanging on to that grande worker for when stuff like that happens it's super chill the automa for solo is really chill it just you just flip cards and it tells you what it does it tells you hey look it's gonna take all of these spots work with what whatever's left over and it's like oh, okay cool so he took that one so then i could do this one i know a lot of people who just break out a glass of wine while they play this and it's just sip a glass of wine sip and play and um that's the type of game it is i love this game man just grab your favorite drink sit down play a nice solo game of this or play with somebody um the last time me and my wife played it we made a, a charcuterie board with um with some uh, what do we get like the sparkling like apple cider um it was really really fun man and we we're just sitting there sipping away at the, at the apple cider and the and the, the charcuterie board with the cheese and the crackers and the stuff like that it, it was so fun man i was just like bro this game is my favorite comforting game like if i just want to de-stress and relax 
That's what Viticulture does for me. I don't find myself getting frustrated when I play it. It just makes me feel chill. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. So Viticulture, that's my number one. And that was my top 10 comforting, cozy, chill, zen games. And so um, let me know in the comment section what you think of my list. Do you agree with it? What game should I add to this? Um, you know, I know one of them is Creature Comforts. I heard that that's a very comforting, comfy, uh, chill game. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I think I remember seeing, so, uh, you know, uh, people say that that's that type of game. But yeah, what do you think of this list? Let me know in the comments. Let me know which games I should play that are very comforting, that don't have a ton of player interaction, that's negatively going to affect you, and just makes you... Have a great time, right? Anyway, thanks for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the Patreon. And I will see you guys on the flippity flip. If anybody doesn't know where that's from, it's from The Office. Go back and watch that. Michael Scott. Catch you on the flippity flip. See you guys later. Peace.